So this is another flow hive. You may have seen the other flow hive video we made in which we, well, we did find some criticism of the, uh, of the flow hive mechanism, um, especially in the context of the English, um, should we say, weather and season. And we're, because we're just coming into ivy season now, ivy is just coming into flower. And um, those of you in uh, the USA, Canada, Australia, places like that won't have experienced ivy. Um, it's the, the Latin name is uh, Hedera helix. It's, it's, it's very common in, in Britain and in Europe, but it's not uh, present as far as I'm aware in, in the Americas. Or, uh, or elsewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, especially not. So, <clears throat> ivy is a plant that grows predominantly as a, as a tree climber. It uses trees as its support, and it, it climbs up the trunk of trees, and it can reach, well, it can reach 70, 80 feet into the air. Um, it flowers prolifically from usually mid-September-ish in, in Britain onwards, and it can flower right through into December. So it's got a long season and bees love it. Um, we also have a, a, special, a specialist bee called the ivy bee, which emerges and feeds specifically on the ivy flower, but honeybees love ivy. So, and, and of course, it's the last crop that comes in before winter, so it's, it's very valuable as far as uh, topping up the hive is concerned. Now, the, the only problem with ivy is that it crystallizes really, really quickly. It crystallizes, you can actually watch it crystallizing in the comb, it's that fast. Um, and it sets really hard. So uh, if you get it into your, into a standard super, into a standard frame, um, you end up with a, uh, a solid block of honey, if you like. Now that's not really a problem um, in, in the normal, way of things because you can cut that block up into smaller pieces you can eat it if you like not everybody likes ivy honey it's got a very particular flavor um, but the bees use it the bees can use it as, a, as, as part of their winter stores and because it's the last honey that they put into the hive it's usually the last one they get to um, through the winter um, so although it sets really hard it does soften a bit when the weather warms up again in the spring so the bees can make use of it now that's all very well and good in a standard super. Um, however, when it comes to a flow hive, uh, we could have a problem because, as we know, the, the flow super is made up of moving parts. And when it becomes full of crystallized honey, it's not gonna move anymore. And so it's gonna gum up the work, something horrible. So because it's starting to flow now, we, we think it's just starting. Um, we don't want to risk having quick setting ivy honey in our flow super, which is this box here. So we're going to extract whatever we can from this flow super, uh, and then we have no choice really but to remove it, because if we leave it on there, they're simply going to top it up again with the ivy. The first thing to do then is to figure out how much of this box is capped and the, the way you do that is by opening the window at the side because this frame here is, is the likely to be the last one to be capped and we can see immediately that indeed the honey that's in this in this frame here is nicely capped. The bees are still um, working on it by the look of it here and there. They're maybe just tidying it up and they, you know, finessing it a little bit, but generally that is capped. And so we can take that as a strong evidence that the frames, the other frames in here are also capped. So if we have a look at the back. <clears throat> there were some comments on the last video that, had I, uh, that I had left off a vital part of this hive and whoops there's a piece that falls off every time I open it which is slightly annoying and I'm just going to take something of, of note I mean I don't know whether this is peculiar to mine or or whether it's just um, a, a, like an early version that wasn't quite right but this um, opening 
uh, rotating piece is supposed to expose the the whole of the edge of this piece so that, that, that will come out or theoretically will come out but it doesn't quite it doesn't quite go up high enough which is slightly annoying but it, it, you can still get this off but it's just not quite right anyway here we are um, now then we're looking at the ends of the combs here and I think the last I would say the last row, anyway, of of of, um, of these cells is not filled on any of these combs. However, uh, there's a few bees leaking out here. Now, as far as I understand it, people are telling me that there should be a metal piece running along here, joining the two sides together, which is supposed to stop bees getting out into this space. Well. That, that's as may be, but I don't seem to have that metal part, or if I ever had it, um, I mean, blame my own incompetence by all means, I, I perhaps did not fit it, and I pro possibly didn't follow the instructions fully. But anyway, that's by the by, there are a few bees getting into this space, but that doesn't really matter. Um, the important thing is, can we get some honey out of this thing? So the way we do that is by um, removing the uh, one of these plugs now <coughs> okay I can there we are I can remove the plug all right I'm just going to pop it back in case any bee decides to get in there uh, there's a plastic tube which is actually in my pocket which goes into that hole and I'm guessing it must go in that way because it won't fit that way right so it does go in that way and there we go, that pretty much locks in place, kind of, it's, it's not a, yeah, it doesn't feel that secure, but it's okay. So, right, the next part of the operation is to remove this plug here, which came out quite easily, and insert the key. So here's our key, and that's going to go into the lower of the two slots right to the right to the end and now I'm going to turn the key that's quite a mm, that requires a lot of force and I'm, and I'm slightly concerned now because it's not turning it's it feels like I'm going to break something to be honest if I if I turn that key it feels like something's going to give, and not in a good way. <sighs> That's really jammed very, very tight. I mean, I can, I could force it a bit further. I'm just not sure whether it's a good idea or not. Mm. I'm applying quite a lot of force to this. There's sort of creaking noises going on, but nothing is really moving at all. Okay, try again. That's a lot of... <sighs> no. Let's see what's happened to the... Yeah, I would say this, this metal key has actually twisted. I've, I've forced the, um, this bend here to, to twist. I'm going to have another go. <laughs> Right, so I've succeeded in turning it into an upright position. So that should theoretically now release the liquid honey, which should run down into the bottom of the comb. I think I can see that happening. <laughs> So, um, theoretically, there should be honey now descending through the cells into the tank or the channel at the bottom, and that should, at some point soon, start to run out of the tube. At the 
bees are going to start taking interest in the smell of exposed honey. So to avoid any bees getting in there, I'm just going to pop a leaf in the end. So this honey will be quite a mixture of flowers. Uh, there's there's um, very productive walled gardens here. So we are actually seeing honey now. Here's some honey coming out. This is the first, this is our first flow hive honey. It tastes good. Um, now, I'm imagining that, I don't know how much each of these holds, but I would imagine we're talking, um, I don't know, maybe a couple of kilos or maybe not as much as that. Uh, and if it comes out at this speed, <laughs> it's going to take a while. And so we have a question of, well, the bees are going to smell this fairly soon, and they're going to want it back. It, it, it may build up a little bit of speed um, once it gets going. Of course, the big, the big selling point of the flow hive is that you get honey out uh, with no contamination from, from wax or propolis or any other substance. And you just get pure honey, which is, which is certainly what appears to be happening, and, and why wouldn't it? I've got a bee now that's gone into the top bit where I put the key, so I'm going to... I think I should remove that key and the bee as well and put the, the cover back because we need to reset it I guess once we've done. So honey is coming out, well, slowly um, now. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing this at live speed and no. people will get extremely bored. Three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm not really going to stand here doing this uh, in depth for, for an hour either. So it seems to me that um, this, is, this is great. I mean, this is happening. Um, but the next thing we would really want is some way of getting it from here into here without exposing it to the air because sooner or later the bees are going to suss what we're doing <laughs> and they're going to they're going to come around and, and try and take it all back again um, so we don't really want that happening and so the only real way to do that as far as i can see would be to have a, a tube running from here uh, you know round a bend and into the into the top of the bottle with a tight fitting stopper of some description um, to keep the bees out of it. So we're going to have to improvise here. That will hold it in place and at least saves me holding the bottle. So the local wildflower honey luckily doesn't crystallise quickly. It's probably got a lot of clover in it, among other things. We are in an area here which is largely pasture. It's largely grassland with some forest and some gardens. So there's practically no arable farming around here and there's no oilseed rape within flying distance, thank goodness. And that ensures that we have, during the summer, uh, our honey is largely not likely to crystallise which makes extraction easier than it otherwise would be. Um, now clearly there's no, there's no particular need to do one frame at a time here. Um, we could easily extract several of these simultaneously, if not all of them simultaneously. The difficulty would be then uh, we would need, well, some kind of manifold uh, to connect all those tubes together 
and then leave them into one which would go into our um, container. We don't have such a thing. Uh, I, could make, I could make a manifold, I, I think, quite easily. Uh, and maybe that's the answer. Maybe I should, I should do that. And perhaps we'll sell that as an accessory. <laughs> if anybody has uh, cracked that one, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have managed to make a manifold to uh, so that you can empty one of these all in one go, then, then that might be a useful little toy. Yeah, we've got a bee that's going to check us out and to find out where the honey is going. Uh, it's probably going to go back and tell it's all its mates that somebody's stealing their honey. Well, it's still flowing, I have to say. It's still flowing and it's coming out into the bottle. And this is great because this is the first time in uh, three years, three seasons, we've had these things set up. It's the first time we've been able to empty a frame, do you call them frames? A, a flow super, a flow frame. Um, it's the first time we've been able to tap one off because previously we just haven't had the capped um, honey to, to, to take off. Looking through the end of the hive here I can see quite a lot of agitated bees uh, maybe trying to figure out what's going on because suddenly their honey is disappearing which must be very puzzling for them. There's some bits of, uh, I guess it's wax, um, coming out at the moment. I guess that's where the cells get broken, or the cappings get broken, and get sort of sucked into the um, into the honey as it drains. Well, it's not exciting, is it? Really? <laughs> it's a bit like watching paint dry, but more fun than that, perhaps. But... Tastes better. Mm. So we've got this far, we've proved that the, this thing does actually work in, in, in our conditions, um, at least for this uh, summer honey. So now we're going to see if we can actually su shut the flow off before it's completed because we have to be elsewhere. So I'm going to put this tap back in fully, turn it back through 90 degrees and there we are. That should close the cells or rather, should we say, open the cells again to their full extent and obviously there's honey still in there which is going to continue to come out until it's uh, um, until it's em well until the bottom channel is empty at least but no more honey will flow down will cascade down through the cells so we've now reset the the cells so now does that mean that the the cappings are damaged or broken i imagine it does so the bees are going to notice they're going to see that the, the, the cappings are broken and so and the, and the cells are at least partially emptied and I imagine now they're going to get busy refilling them. So I'm just going fishing for wasps now. This flow hive appears to be working well. It's doing as advertised, where we can take honey off it without disturbing the bees, which is great. My only reservation really now is about the uh, rapidly crystallizing ivy honey, which comes in from about now onwards, getting into the, the, the flow super, because that is gonna jam up the works. Had quite a struggle to open it with the, with the lever here, uh, which is the official tool but it did eventually open and the honey did come out and so that's all good um, that wouldn't happen with crystallized honey for sure we would have to take out individual combs and we'd have to put them in hot water or something or maybe warm up with hot air to get the uh, honey out but this seems to be working fine like this so quite happy with that <laughs> 